Hello, this is Amy Zaby with the Jerusalem Connection Red Alert Report for Wednesday, October 9th. Reflection and Atonement. Adam Milstein, an American Jew, is working tirelessly to educate the public and provide funding and support for various pro-Jewish groups around the country, including on U.S. college campuses. His Facebook page, the Adam and Gila Milstein Family Foundation, is followed closely by Christians and Jews. To pick up on our topic from last week, we reflect on and receive atonement. Why is anti-Semitism and hate pointed at Jews so widely accepted in an age where tolerance, social justice to all identity groups from every facet of the spectrum, and a rally cry for equality and justice and coexistence is clamored on in the culture every day, and yet this one type of hatred is tolerated? Back in the early part of the 20th century, and of course in the 18th and 19th century, open prejudice and hate and discrimination against the black population in America was not only commonplace and accepted and bantered about at dinner parties and, and the like, it was systemic and, before the Civil War, actually sanctioned by the U.S. government. And of course, nowadays, the idea of making a joke about, about, about a black person at a dinner party, posting a meme on so Facebook, that degrades a black person, well, this is grounds, at the very least, for ostracization by the general public, and rightly so. Even as recently as 15 years ago, one could say openly that they didn't agree with gay marriage. And they might receive support or disagreement, but it would not necessarily be considered some sort of hate speech. Nowadays, any in disagreement with any facet of the LGBTQ community or any other criticism in any other group renders a person a bigot and at the at the very least especially by the left when someone does post a meme or a trope about jewish people or the state of israel it is defended by the press and the media and the general culture as a mistake or misunderstood or misfired attempt at humor any number of excuses including that maybe the poster didn't even know it was offensive Examples of, the, of this, of course, include public social media, tweets, and other um, uh, public discourse by congresspeople, congresswomen Tlaib and Omar, and others such as Sarsour, and overseas players such as Corbyn in the UK. Milstein concentrates his efforts in, on issues in the United States, and in his September 2019 article, which can be found on the Adam and Gila Milstein Foundation, Family Foundation Facebook page or in the September archives of the Jerusalem Post, Milstein asked the question of why is anti-Semitism and Jew hate so accepted. He enumerates many good points that I'd like to share. The media and left-leaning groups, including the Democratic Party, tend only to address anti-Semitism when it crops up on the far right. And of course, this should be addressed, and it should be squashed, and it does happen. But when it's discovered in their own ranks, that is, within groups on the left, it is often dismissed, and the originator is excused as part of some oppressed group who didn't know any better or is just le leaking out. Uh, this is a sentiment that was echoed in Rabbi Spiro's article that I discussed last week. Islamic anti-Semitism is indeed on, on the rise at an alarming rate, and in a recent study that was re um, done in Europe is the core of many of the uh, acts of aggression against Jews in Europe today. But progressive anti-Semitism is also on the rise, and it is far more dangerous because it is so widely accepted and excused. And this is filtering directly into the U.S. culture unchallenged. Adam makes the following points that I do want to quote. With new allies across the political spectrum, Jew haters have found friends in unlikely places. Anti-Semitism no longer comes from fringe groups. Instead, an alliance of Jew haters has been forged by the radical left, radical Muslims, and the radical right. This three-headed monster of bigotry is best exemplified in the unlikely alliance between David Duke and Nilhan Omar. <clears throat> and to further that point, I'd say that school curriculums are continually becoming more and more anti-Israel in their textbooks and lessons plans. And these um, are done in the name of tolerance and progressivism, but I say it indoctrinates kids as early as high school and in some places middle school to have an inherent distrust or dislike of Israel and by default the Jewish people. 
This idea of um, a drumbeat against Israel as part of the curriculum has been going on openly on college campuses in the West for the last 15 years. The Students for Justice in Palestine group and other pro-Palestinian so-called human rights groups are just an anti-Israel groups disguised as um, human rights protectors. But they ignore openly the oppressions in the Middle East and the events in the Middle East that oppress Palestinians and others that have nothing to do with the Jewish people or the state of Israel. The Gazans recognize the own corruption in their leadership, but these groups do nothing to expose or combat those. And these groups, which are funded and um, relied on by, uh, by Muslim and Islamic funds and uh, Islamic uh, uh, theology, they get support from the left, a left who's supposed to be pro-feminist, pro-LGBTQ, BTQ, and the like. But they support Israel haters, and have these Israel haters have systematically oppressed women in prisons or execute gays. It is to say that the common hate of Jews and Israel allows these groups to align themselves even at the detriment of their other tenets which, would, which they hold dear but otherwise oppose each other. Sharia law and the idea of diversity and tolerance are simply juxtaposed. Adam notes a few things for Jewish communities to do to combat this trend. And I say as Zionists who are not Jewish, we can join right in. His first assertion is that we have to move from defense to offense with the following steps. Embrace and support the modern state of Israel, knowing she's not perfect, but knowing she has the right to exist and the right to defend herself and the right to exist as a Jewish state, the only Jewish state on the planet. Israel is a safeguard for Jews worldwide. Second, do a better job at harnessing the Jewish community's strength to protect themselves. The Jewish community is one among the most successful immigrant communities in the U.S. And they should not hesitate to leverage that position to fight Jew hating. Leadership in Jewish community, resources and influence have the potential to become a real game changer in putting Jew haters on the defensive. Embrace allies. Jewish enemies also have other common enemies. That is ally with people that have the same enemies as the Jewish enemy. To me, I would argue that this is a call to the Christian community, a community that is indeed the number one victim of modern genocide presently in the Middle East. But there's other groups as well. Going on the offense that we meet needs, means we need to do some work, researching and knowing the enemy, who the players are, the finances behind them, the agendas, the calendars, this means time, and time can mean money. So we need to support the organizations such as StopAntiSemitism.org, the McAfee groups on college campuses, the Jerusalem Connection International, this organization, the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem, uh, the Adam and Gila Milstein Foundation, and others who seek to uh, use reason and academic knowledge and um, proper methodologies to research and educate on anti-Semitism against Jewish people and the state of Israel and to have the funds to report those and reach out to people to help them see the truth. The common enemies include officials such as Omar and Tlaib in the U.S. Congress, Sassor, uh, uh, a feminist so to speak, Roger Waters in the, in the um, entertainment community, the UK's Jeremy Corbyn in the Labour Party, college campus group, groups such as the SJP, Students for Justice in Palestine, J Street and the Jewish Voice for Peace, many more. Let us support the organizations, let us support each other to go on the offensive. And I mean the offensive with the weapons of discourse, education and information. Time and money, whatever influence you can be. And that can just be reposting and disseminating information that you see that is vetted and published on your social media feeds and in your own research and distributing that to your own network via email, social media, and in your conversations every day. Every person can do what they can, where they can. Shavuot Tov. Have a great week.